There are a lot of times in furniture making and woodworking where the classic way, the proper way, or the way I just want to do it is to use a visible screw. And when I'm in those situations, a lot of times I prefer to turn to brass screws. But they take a unique kind of finesse to do right. That's what we're going to talk about today. I personally like incorporating brass into my work. I put in a lot of my planes, a lot of my drawer cases have brass pieces in them. Even some of my tables, I use brass undercarriage parts in conjunction with wood legs and stuff in the past. I, I just like the look of brass. I even know some people that have done entire chests uh, made out of uh, with brass as the joinery and they'll use a the brass along the sides of the chest and they'll have a brass screw going in this way and this way on a butt jointed or mitered corner and what they do is they will leave them proud just a little bit so that they can sand off or grind off the uh, the slot so it looks like a, just a brass dowel but you have the mechanical joining powers of the threads to work into it the thing is though, if you are going to use brass screws, you've got to take in some special consideration. They are just a lot softer than steel. Uh, whatever this material is that they're calling brass nowadays, it, they can snap off. So you just have to take into consideration that. They're also, if you buy the good ones, they're constructed differently. I've got a steel screw here and I keep this screw in my box of brass ones because it has the same thread pattern but you notice this is very consistent coming down whereas the brass one it tapers all the way down also notice that the uh, shoulder or the shank or whatever they call that it is completely in line with the threads so it looks like they had a solid brass piece and then they cut out this threading so the threading is really steep down here, but it's not much up there because it's got that taper in the center point. That's a classic screw. These are more modern ones just because they're cheaper to manufacture, I think. Also, if you look at this angle right here, most of these are set at 45. I believe these are a tad bit steeper than 45 so that if you create a recess for them to sit on, they will actually touch on the top and form, get a tighter fit. So they put a lot of thought into these screws and the same kind of characteristics go as long as you go even on the smaller ones. Notice the shank is as wide as all the threads. The threads get steeper the deeper they go and the center section tapers. It's because these are designed to be used when you pre-drill a hole a special way. When you use brass, you're going to have to drill two holes. And generally, you're joining two pieces of wood together. So one hole will be in one board, the other hole will be in the second board. The first hole is the exact thickness of the shank on the top. It can't be any smaller because that will cause resistance and it'll, it'll, it might cause the screw to snap. The second one is going to be the thickness of the medium size center section. Not the very tip, but the medium size one. The tip will just guide the screw in straight. And this will draw the one board down into the other. So you're going to need two drill bits. I'm going to use a push drill right here for the center section. Just an old uh, Miller Falls style. And then I'm going to be using a 3 16 drill bit for this number eight and these are basically all sized for specific drill bits now a lot of times i'm putting the screw in after the fact i'm adding a mechanical uh, backup to a glue joint for example when i did those drawers i had a rabbit i put a butt joint into the rabbit so it didn't show up front but i had the side right there i glued it all up and after it was glued up i put the screw in and in those situations, you just kind of treat it like solid wood. So I have a screw right here, and I want to put in the hole in the very beginning. So I like to start with the bigger screw because I use brad point bits, and they have that center point. So I'll load up my bit. I will center the hole where I want. Normally I would anchor this down, but I don't think you need to. And I would drill the hole just the depth of that shank. 
not much more. And if you look into that hole, you will see a slight dimple from the brad point. I will use that to center my push drill. And the push drill, you just find the center point and press down. You'd be surprised at how efficient these things are. And the last thing I like to do is put that little bevel on the side. I, you know, I'm just forgetting my brain right now what those are called. I just drop it into my screwdriver. You can actually put these into your uh, drills, but this will get the work done. But I don't go too far because I don't want it to be bigger than the head. You're then going to want to pre-thread the hole. And I like to use that steel screw that I keep in the box with the screws to do that. Just grind, thread it in, then back it out. Throw it back in the box, then you can grab your screw, and the next step is you want to lube it up. Yep, they do make a special wax for screw called Screw Wax, and I think it's just bees, beeswax with a little mineral oil in it. And then you should be able to drop the screw in quite a ways because remember the thread the first hole was bigger than the thread that's the size of the shank and then you can come over it bottoms out in the secondary hole that's actually just at the second board or whatever else you're attaching to it and thread it in and it's going to go in very easily because it's pre-threaded and then you can just grind it up now if you don't like the look of a flush th screw one of the big advantages of brass is if it, you leave it a little proud, you can always take your mill file. Uh, you get the idea. So if you're going to use screws in an area that shows, instead of the chrome stainless steel ones or anything like that, try brass. Might class it up a little bit. For today's bonus, I'd like to talk about a Texas woodworking educator who is kind of subtly becoming legendary among us. You would not believe how many high quality uh, woodworkers that you know their names of, that you probably follow on social medias, that owe their education to this person. But before we do that, if you like this video, please do me a favor. Like, favorite, subscribe, do all those social medias. Visit my website, wortheffort.com, where I have a lot of my own woodworking for sale and t-shirt swag that kind of stuff all those sales help support the school I also have a lot more free woodworking content available through the through the site now Frank Straza has been around Texas woodworking for 20 over 20 years I believe I know I first met him at some woodworking shows back in the early 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 2000s and uh, he's been doing live demonstrations all over the place that's probably where a lot of y'all will recognize his face because you've actually seen him demonstrating in front of you. He also teaches up in Waco at the Homestead Heritage. But I'm going to link down below a video they did of him as he built a Texas end table that got put in the museum in Austin and a link to his Instagram account. And if you're on Instagram, I highly suggest you follow him because he's doing some really phenomenal work and he intersperses these really cool things with little lessons. As I said, he is a great educator. Frank Straza, look for the links below.